Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian and I'm a teaching assistant for the course CS3240 Human Computer Interaction. This video is an introduction to Microsoft Expression Land. You can find other resources related to Silverlight and Human Computer Interaction at our course blog at blog.nus.edu.sg slash CS3240. You may also contact me at sebng85 at gmail.com if you have any doubt regarding this video. We will be using Microsoft Expression Blend in this video. What is Microsoft Expression Blend? It is a what you see is what you get tool for designing the user interface of Silverlight and WPF applications. WPF, which means Windows Presentation Foundation is a development tool for creating interactive Windows-based application. We will not be going into WPF in this video. Nevertheless, if you try playing around with it, you will realize that it has a lot of similarities to Silverlight. Microsoft Expression Blend is part of Microsoft Expression Studio. If you are a student, you may go to www.dreamspark.com to download a free version. Otherwise, you may search for Microsoft Expression Blend 4 in a search engine and you should be able to find a link to download a trial version. This application that you see on the screen now is Microsoft Expression Blend. By default, a welcome screen will be displayed when you launch this application. To create a new project, click on the New Project option. Alternatively, you may go to File and click on New Project or press Ctrl Shift N to invoke the New Project dialog. Under the New Project dialog, choose Silverlight Application Plus Website. Specify a name for your project and choose where you want it to be saved. For the language option, choose either Visual C Sharp or Visual Basic. In this video, we will not be doing any programming, hence you may leave it as its default value. For the version option, choose 4.0 which is the latest Silverlight version currently. Click OK and a new project will be created with a blank page. Under the Projects section, you will be able to manage the files within the solution. You may switch to different files by double-clicking on them. You may add new items by right-clicking on the project and then choose the appropriate option. You may also add new items by dragging them into this section. You may add an image onto a page by dragging it from this section onto the canvas. After an object is added to the canvas, it will appear under the Objects and Timeline section. You will notice that two projects have been created. Lab1 is a Silverlight project, while Lab1 site is a website project for hosting your Silverlight application. Notice that there is no folder called Client Bin in Website1 now. Let's run the application in a browser by going to Project and choose Run Project or simply press the F5 key. When you go back to the Projects section, you will notice that a new folder called Client Bean has been created with a .xap file within it. The .zap file is created when you build your Silverlight project. It is a compressed version of your Silverlight project. All resources in your Silverlight project, such as the basketball image, will be contained within it. It is the only file that you will need to deploy on a web server to make your Silverlight application available on the World Wide Web. You will need to embed your Silverlight application as an object within a web page to make it viewable. There are several tools under the Tools section. Let's add two rectangles to demonstrate the usage of these tools.
Let's set the color of the lower rectangle blue. I shall introduce the tools starting from the top. The first tool is called the selection tool. It allows you to select an object on the canvas and perform simple manipulation such as shifting the object, resizing the object, and rotating the object. The next tool is called the direct selection tool. Similarly, it allows you to select an object but it only allows you to move the object around. The next tool is called the pen tool. It allows you to shift the canvas. This is particularly useful when you are in a zoom in mode. Speaking of which, the next tool is called the zoom tool. It allows you to zoom in to a particular area on the canvas. Alternatively, you may zoom in by scrolling your mouse wheel upwards or pressing the key combination Ctrl and Plus. Similarly, you can zoom out by scrolling your mouse wheel downwards or pressing the key combination Ctrl and Minus. The eyedropper allows you to obtain the color of an object on the canvas. For instance, if I would like to set the color of the rectangle on the right to be the same as the other rectangle, first I click on the selection tool and then I click on the rectangle then I click on the eyedropper tool and I click on the color that I want. The rectangle on the right will be filled with the same color as where the ink dropper has been clicked. The paint bucket allows you to fill objects with the active color. For instance, let's change the color of the right rectangle to gray. If you would like to change the color of the left rectangle to gray as well, hover the paint bucket over it and click on it. Now, the left rectangle will be filled with the active color, which is grey. The gradient tool allows you to apply a gradient to an object. The pen tool allows you to draw lines and curves by connecting points. The shape tool allows you to insert shapes onto the canvas. Click on it and hold it there and you will be able to see other kinds of shapes that you can insert on the canvas. For instance, choose ellipse and then draw the ellipse on the canvas. In order to maintain the aspect ratio, press the shift key while resizing the shape. The text tools allow you to add different kinds of text controls onto the canvas. Let's add a text block which is a read-only text control onto the canvas. The control tools allow you to add common UI components onto the canvas. Let's add two buttons onto the canvas. You can find all the above mentioned tools and many others by clicking on the assets tool. Every object has its own properties. To view or modify its properties, use the selector tool and select the object on the canvas. Then you will be able to view and modify its properties under the properties section on the right hand side of the screen. You can press the F6 key to switch to a mode with a wider design space. To switch back, press the F6 key again. Now, let's do some simple animation. I will demonstrate how you can create a bouncing basketball easily. Let's remove the unwanted items on the screen. Let's give this application a title. Double click on the text block. Let's call it bouncing basketball. You may decorate its title by changing its properties. Give a meaningful name for every object on the canvas. This will be very helpful when your application involves programming. Change the content of one button to toggle and name it VNT toggle. 
and the other button to reset. And name it VNT reset. Resize the rectangle to make it look like a floor surface. Adjust the basketball to its starting position. Start creating the animation by clicking on the plus icon. Give a name for the storyboard. Let's call it Bouncing. Click OK. Click this icon to add a keyframe. Go to the 1.6 second and add another keyframe. Do not adjust the basketball. This will allow the basketball to return to its original position at the end of the animation. Go to 0.4 second and add a keyframe. Adjust the basketball slightly lower and add some rotation to it. Click on the keyframe at the 0.4 second mark. Press Ctrl C to copy this keyframe. Go to 1.2 second and press Ctrl V to insert an identical keyframe. This will allow the basketball to have the same position at 0.4 second and 1.2 second. Go to 0.8 second. Add a keyframe. Adjust the basketball so that it makes contact with the floor. Add some rotation again. You can now preview your full animation. Go to 0 second and click on the play button. If you are not satisfied with the animation, you can still make modifications. Go to the keyframe at 0.4 second and move the basketball slightly lower. Copy the keyframe by pressing Ctrl C. Go to the keyframe at 0.8 second and press Ctrl V. Now go back to 0 second again and click on the play button. If you are satisfied with the animation, stop the recording. Toggle the view to split mode by clicking on the split button on the top right beside the properties section. The code that you see below is called Extensible Application Markup Language. In short, we call it XAML. You will notice that for every object on the canvas, there is a corresponding tag in the XAML. Scroll to the top and look for the storyboard named Bouncing. Click on it. You will be able to see its properties under the Properties section on the right hand side. Change the Repeat Behavior to Forever. Go to Assets and then Behaviors. Click and hold Control Storyboard Action and drop it over Ball. Change the event name to Loaded. Choose the Control Storyboard option as Play and select the Storyboard Bouncing. Press the F5 key to test the application in a browser. You have created a bouncing basketball animation. Add a Control Storyboard action to the Toggle button and the Reset button. Click on the control storyboard action of the toggle button. Leave the event name as click and change the control storyboard option to toggle play pause. Select the storyboard. Do the same for the control storyboard action of the reset button. Press the F5 key to test this application in a browser. Now, when you click on the toggle button, you will alternate between pausing and resuming the animation. If you click on the reset button, you will stop the animation and return it to its initial frame. And here, you have your first Silverlight application. Once again, my name is Sebastian. If you have any question regarding this video, please feel free to email me at sebng85 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching this video.